Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about A star pathfinding algorithms. As a quick disclaimer, this video is almost 100% based off an article written by Patrick Lester. So if you want more information, go ahead and check that out. There's a link in the description. So anyway, A star pathfinding algorithms. This is our scenario. We have this grid and we can move from block to block on the grid. So we're going to say we're going to that we're going to start from there and end here. And we're going to our path from between the points is going to represent a sequence of steps from block to block. So obviously, right now the, it's, it's very clear what the fastest path is, just a straight line. So to, to um, make this a little bit more difficult for ourselves, we're going to, I'm going to cross those off. I'm going to say those are solid and we cannot traverse that territory. The way at which we're going to kind of find the fastest route is we're going to, you know, Travel, start, start at one block, we're going to go through a s series of steps, we're going to think through a logical process, and then based off that we're going to decide what, which block to step to next. And by repeating that over and over again, we're going to end up at the end, and we're going to end up with the fastest route. So, we're going to start at the beginning, and the first step in a logical process is we're going to mark the current block off the list. So. The reason we do that is if we're you know, tra traveling along whatever our path is, and we come across a block that's marked off, that means that we've been there before. You know, it's kind of like if you're traveling through a forest. In order to make sure that you don't get lost, you mark off trees as you go. And then if you see a tree that's marked, that means that you've been there before and you go in circles. And circles, for as, for as far as efficient pathfinding goes, circles are very bad because that means you're, you haven't made any progress but have used up time and energy. So we're going to try and avoid circles, and the way we ensure that is we're going to mark our trail as we go. So, in order to show that this is marked off, I'm going to put a little X over here. And also, just to show that this is the current one we're processing, to make that clear, I'm going to put a little dot there just to show that's the current one we're processing. The second step in our logical deductive process is we're going to analyze all adjacent blocks. And the first step in that is to set the parent node of our adjacent blocks. So, when I say parent, I mean the parent of the current block is the block we used to get to the current current block. So that's kind of, kind of how we're going to keep track of where we came from. The parent is representing where we came from. So I'll just go and write that down. So, And the way we're going to denote this is for each one we're going to draw arrows representing the parent block. So the parent of this is a starting block. And also when I say adjacent blocks I mean any block that we can travel to. And that's different depending on how you want to define your, your system. But in this case, we're going to go with an eight directional movement so we can move both um, to the sides, up and down, and to diagonals. So we're going to go ahead and set the parent block for all of those around us, our eight directions. So we'll just put an arrow in each of them, indicating that if we traveled one of them, we would have came from where we're pointing, the starting block. All right. The next step is to calculate what we call the G, H, and F values, and we'll, we'll get to those one by one. So, we're going to calculate G, H, and F. We'll go and start with G. G is going to be distance between the starting block and our current position. So let's look at that in here. So, if we look at, we're going to say that the width of each of these blocks is 10. So this first, this one right here is going to be 10 away. So I'm going to just draw the G in the bottom left. And as a kind of key down here, we're going to have our G be in the bottom left every time. So for that one, it's 10. And then for this, these diagonal ones, it will be, let's see, that would be 10 times the square root of 2. But in programming, a general, a general estimate is good enough. So uh, 10 times the square root of 2 is... 14.28 something something. So we're just going to say 14, which is, is close enough. So I can write 14 on this one. And we can continue to calculate it for all, all of these that we can, all of our adjacent blocks. 14, 10. All right. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the H values. H represents the distance between our current position and ending. Um, the, the big difference between G and H is that G is always an exact value. We can tell exactly how far we traveled from the start. But we can't tell exactly how far it is um, from our current position to the end. We don't know what obstacles are going to be between 
between us, and what obstacles we may come across. H actually stands for heuristic, meaning guess. So, so from there, there are many different ways to calculate that. Let me go ahead and write this down. So, H equals the distance to end. And we're going to go ahead and calculate this using what we call the Manhattan method, which is instead of calculating the exact distance, you know, Pythagorean theorem and all that, we're going to, to um, count how many blocks horizontal and add it to how many blocks vertical. This is called the Manhattan method because if you're in Manhattan, when you talk about how to get from point A to point B, you're talking about how many streets you're crossing and how many columns, avenues, how many avenues you're, you're traveling. So that's kind of the same idea here. So when we're calculating our H for these ones, by the way, it's going to be in the bottom right, we're going to write that. For this one, it'll be 1, 2, 3 blocks over, so that's 30. For this one, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, so we go 3 over and 1 down, so that'll be 40. And this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you kind of get the idea. We'll go ahead and fill in the, fill in the rest of them. So that's 60. And over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 40. All right. Now, G and H are both very important for as far as determining which one we should take first. You know, um, H, of course, matters because we want to move, we want to, over time, move closer to the end. So our, we want our H to be, we want to pick, always be picking an H that's small. But at the same time, it doesn't really matter if it's close to the end if we have to travel 2,000 miles to get there, kind of. So your G is also something definitely to be considered. So in order to make a statistic that calculates both, we're going to say F, and that's going to be equal to our H plus our G. So that's fairly simple. And in our grid, our F's going to be in the top left. So you can see here, we can do 10 plus 30. It's going to be 40. 14 plus 40, 54. 10 plus 50, 60. 14 plus 60, 74. And you get the point. I'll go ahead and fill out the rest. 60, 14, all right, so that's that. And then for the last step in our logical sequence, we're going to shift the current node, we're going to move towards the one with the lowest F value, because remember the F is the combination of how far it takes to get there and how far it takes to get from there to our final position. So that's going to be our third step. We're going to pick the block with the lowest F score. All right, so shifting over here. From there, if we are looking at all of our adjacent blocks, we can see this one has, that's a 4, by the way. We can see this one has an F score of 40, so we're going to be selecting that one. So we're going to shift our dot over here, and now we're on new nodes, new node, or new block, so we get to go through this list again. First, mark it off. So I put a big X through it, make sure we don't come there again. Next, analyze adjacent blocks. In this case, the situation is a little bit different. We have these three blocks, which we, we can't move towards, so we're not even going to look at them and all the rest of them have already been analyzed. When you come across blocks that have already been analyzed, the question is, should we change the properties of this block? Um, is it faster to go through our, the current block we're on? So in this case, the question is, do we change the values of this block? And we will change them if it's more beneficial to go through the current node than it is to go from the starting straight. So we determine which is more beneficial by comparing the G values. Do we end up with a smaller G going through this one? or just going straight. In this case, it's fairly simple, but we'll calculate it anyway. It's 14 going straight, and traveling through, through this node, it's 10 and 20. So because it's not beneficial, we will not make any changes to this one. And then the same logic can be applied to all the other three adjacent nodes. Going up here, it's faster than going to the right and then diagonal. So none of their parents change. If, if we were to find that the G is smaller going through the current node, we would need to change, change its parent along with their G and then subsequently change their F as well. When we're choosing our F, we're, we're pretty much choosing from all of our nodes that have us set as their parent. All the nodes that would benefit from traveling through our current position. So, over. so in our case, none of, none of our adjacent blocks have their parent set to this current node which means none of the benefits from traveling through us, which means that we have no options, we're stuck, we're, we reach that end. So we're going to backtrack. No, nope. even though this is crossed off, we didn't, we didn't form a circle, we're backtracking, so we can find a different, a different way. So 
back into the woods example, we have just reached a cliff or something like that. So we need to follow our, our markers back to, to find an alternate way of traveling. So now um, we're here, so we can go through our loop again. Of course, the first two have already been done. Nothing changes there, but for the third one, lowest F, that one does change because we can no longer select this one. So then the question is, uh, let's see, which one's lowest? Well, 54 is our lowest. Which one we go for is arbitrary, depends on your preference. We'll go ahead and go down. So, we'll select this one. And I'll erase that. And first step is to mark it off the list. So we're going to mark it off. Next step, analyze adjacent blocks. In this case, we have three newcomers. So we're going to set all the parents. And then we're going to and then we're going to calculate the G's. So this, this case is a little bit different. Remember, this the G for this one does not represent distance in a straight line from the start. It represents the distance going through the way we came. So in this case, it was 14 to get to here, and distance from the point we came from to this new point is again 14, so it'll be 28. The nice thing about calculating this is we never have to look back at the starting one. We can always just look at how far it took to get to our previous node and add however more we need. So in this case it's 14 plus 10 gives us 24. 14 plus 14 again is 28. Okay. Notice our G's have grown since we're further from the start, but the idea is that as you go your G's will get bigger and bigger and your H's will get smaller and smaller as you get closer to the end. So now for our H's, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 40. One, yes, okay, I did that right. Okay, and then 50 and 60. Just using the Manhattan method, fairly make it fairly simple, dare I say. Um, now, to calculate our F, we'll just be adding the two together. So, same old, same old. 28 plus 40. 68, 24 plus 50 is 74, 28 plus 68 is 80, wait a second, that's a 60, okay, 28 plus 60 is 88. So now, now again, we're going to be selecting from the nodes that have us set as their parent. So we have three n n blocks or nodes that have us set to our parent, and the one with the smallest F is this one, 68. So we're going to be shifting our our point of focus again. So I'll, go, I'll just go ahead, go ahead and finish this. You kind of get the idea of following the same pattern over and over again. And eventually we'll end up at the end. Okay. So, Alright then, once you get to this point, you will eventually reach the end every time, unless it's not possible, which is sometimes the case, some, something you take take into account sometimes. That's actually, get a little off topic, but that's, that's actually, um, that scenario where you can't reach the end is a situation where you have islands. And that's something you need to be careful of, because sometimes you do have islands, like in RTS games, where you're trying to send a villager over to the enemy base, but you are on two islands. That's um, a situation you're going to need to take into account, that, those type of things. There's always a lot of weird situations that can occur. But assuming there's no islands, you will eventually reach the end. And once we're at the end, we determine our path by you know, um, backtracking. So. And right here, the parent points down here, so we'll go down there. And here, the parent points down here, so we'll go down there. And then up, and up again. So you can kind of see that we have this V as our path. And that, in this scenario, is the shortest path. So, that's the A-star pathfinding algorithm. Thank you for joining us.